Good morning everyone, today I want to share with you 7 camera accessories that literally changed my life, made it a lot easier and they're cheap, so if you're ready, let's get started. Yeah, this is gonna be good. All right, guys, welcome to a new episode. I'm Pierre Travel, adventure photographer and creator of 30 Day Adventure to Great Photos. And today, I want to share with you seven camera accessories that changed my life, made it a lot easier as a photographer, and I believe can help you too. So we're gonna dig into those seven items, and then after, we're going to be picking up a few of your questions that you guys dropped on Instagram at Pietti Lambert. All right, item number seven is that little plate that might look like nothing, but but guys, it made my life so much easier. I have different tripods, right? I have different type of mounts for tripods. Manfrotto, Arca Swiss, Manfrotto, and a capture clip that clips onto my backpack so I can hold my camera, which is really cool, by the way. The problem is that all those different systems need different plates. And that was a huge, huge headache for me because I hate unscrewing plates from a camera when I'm on the field. It's not, it's not convenient, it gets in your way, etc. So what I discovered is that recently Peak Design released a plate that is universal. When I say universal, it actually works for Arca Swiss type of clamps and it also works for Creek Release Manfrotto type of plates, which is a great, great time save because now it's gonna fit into my capture clip so I can drop my camera right here when I'm on the field, when I'm not using it, then I can put it on my Arca Swiss tripod right here on the Joby and I also can use it on my Quick Release Manfrotto mounts, which is, wow, that, means I only have one plate on my camera and it never goes anywhere. I don't know about you if you have the same frustration, but if you do, this can really, really help you. And before we move on to accessory number six, I want to let you know that I dropped the links to every item in the description below so you can check them out, check how much they cost in your region, etc. So thank you so much. And now accessory number six is actually that quick release plate. Let me explain to you. I have this Joby tripod, which is great, but one time it slid and fell on the floor because the clamp wasn't tight enough, which was a very bad idea for my camera. I also have that gimbal that I really like from Feutech, but I have to screw on that plate every time on my camera. And on the field, I don't want to do that. I want to be able to go from video to photo very quickly, so removing the camera from the gimbal has always been very important. Now I decided to jump on that occasion to get what we call a Manfrotto quick release plate. Let me explain. You can mount it instead of your camera on a plate, for example, of your gimbal or on your Joby plate, and then you can use those quick releases to just slide it in, press it, and then that's it. Your camera is now locked into position, and whenever you wanna remove it, you just open that clamp, take it out, and you're done. So, that clamp is literally on my gimbal right here, and I easily take my camera on and off. And that is a huge time saver. Now, if you're afraid that it slides out, the great thing is that it has a bevel all around. So once it's in, it actually cannot go anywhere. Versus Arca Swiss types, actually the, the clamp can loosen up a little bit and your camera can slide out. So I will get a second one of those. I've been trying with those lately, and I'm going to mount it on the Joby instead of the Arca Swiss. And since it adapts, thanks to the universal adapter to my capture clip, it means I only have one plate for everything. I personally think that's awesome. It saved me a lot of time on the field and I wanted to share that with you. So if you already have it, let me know in the comments. Maybe you have one of your favorite type of clamps or you have a favorite accessory. I wanna know everything in the comments below. All right, now number three is simply that tiny tripod. That is a fairly cheap tiny tripod that you can put in your pocket that is very convenient because you can absolutely take it anywhere and whenever you want to do some night photography next to the floor you just drop in your camera screw it in or put a man photo plate like i showed you earlier and just use it anywhere it's very convenient when you don't want to be carrying that big joby thing because that is a lot lighter i mean very nice invention and on top of that apparently um, it also screws in at the bottom of a lot of gimbals, so you can use it for many things. So item number five is actually a screen protector, just like for your phone, 
but for the back of your camera. And depending on the model, you're gonna have different sizes, obviously. But I can tell you, I thought it was kind of useless at first. I'm like, well, it's not like a phone. I'm not gonna drop it all the time. But I found that it is very, very helpful to keep the back screen intact. I even was hiking once in the Alps and a little piece of rock fell from the mountain and hit straight onto the back screen. How like random was it? I, I don't even know how that was possible. It didn't hit anywhere else. It hit literally in the middle of the back screen and cracked it. The good news is that I had one of the screen protectors and it made it possible for me to just slide it off, slap on a new one and I was good to go. Let me tell you, if you crack the back of your camera, it's gonna cost you a lot of money and you will regret not getting one of those like seven, eight dollar screen protector for your camera. Oh yeah. Now, number four is something I started playing with recently. It is basically a phone lens. And you might be wondering, wait, aren't we talking about cameras here? Yes, but remember your phone is also a camera and has a camera on it. And using a lens on your phone can actually yield some pretty cool results without having to reach out for your big camera. I started playing with a wide-angle lens recently and I was kind of amazed at how cool and how much easier it was making it for me to find good compositions in my everyday life. Why? Simply because I, I just put my lens on, it gives me a wide angle and then I can have something that is more realistic to when I shoot wide with my camera. So I can try a bunch of compositions and then when I found something I really like, I grab my camera and take the final photo. I actually also take the final photo sometime with my phone, but if I have both with me, I will try to use my camera at all times. Just because it has higher quality, I can do more in post-production with it. But literally, one of those little lens can change the way you shoot and it's so small that you can just have it in your pocket at all time during your day or when you go to the office or in the metro and people don't really care, you know, you're, you're just like, if you do street photography and you're just like shooting like that, no one cares. If you use your camera, you might get personally a little bit more shy and people get, might get a little bit afraid also. So overall, those phone lenses can be very cheap and really get you to shoot more and shoot different kind of photos. Oh yeah. All right, so now we're getting to item number two because apparently I cannot count, I counted one double. You know, when you go out and shoot, it might start raining and then you kind of get afraid to stop shooting because you're like, well, it's raining, I don't want to damage my camera. But what if you had something that allowed you to shoot even when it's raining? And what if it was super cheap? Well, a camera protector for the rain. Oh yeah. Keep in my backpack at all times because it can save a photo shoot. If you want to get some cool shots in the street when it's raining, well, this is how you can achieve your good results. It is basically a sleeve, a camera sleeve that's gonna go around the camera, that's gonna just leave a hole for the lens to come out and at the back it's gonna cover properly the back. And now you can shoot in the rain very, very nicely. And if you want to add something else, then you add a poncho in your backpack and then you completely cover, you can keep shooting for hours in the rain and I can tell you that's gonna get you different kind of photos because most people are gonna be at home or in a coffee shop like trying to warm up themselves while you will be out there shooting shots that no one else shoots. And I think that is a great advantage as a creator. It's to always try something different and something new. And side note, for those of you who've seen me shoot underwater, this is kind of the baby version of my underwater sleeve, which is pretty cool. All right, and now if you're ready, item number one is an awesome reading bay. Oh yeah, what is that little box? You might be wondering. Well, that little box is something that will save you a lot of money on hard drives because it reads internal hard drives, which means you can buy normal internal hard drives for cheaper without having to buy external ones and then just drop them in here, boom, and read them directly like that. It comes out as a USB-C or USB 3.0 directly into your laptop and that is the coolest thing ever. Let me tell you, I use it with my 10 terabyte hard drive. I drop everything from my smaller external hard drives into that big boy. And then I, after that, I have a second one of those hard drives. I drop it in here, press that little button, and it's gonna clone everything from one hard drive to the other. And for me, that has been a great way to save money 
on disk enclosures and a special red system when I'm traveling, when I'm moving a lot on the go and I don't have the ability to have a big tower or server tower or red system, I actually just do that. And it's been great. You can drop in SSDs or normal hard drives in there and it will save you a lot of money because that's around 30 bucks. And then those hard drives are usually cheaper than external ones. So, wow. I hope that will help you. Let me know in the comments what is your favorite item. And remember, I dropped the link to every single one of those down below. And I think there might be promotions, I think, because it's prime day right now on Amazon. So you might check out if any of you is really of interest, if it's cheaper right now or not. Now, I want to pick up some of your questions because you guys had some very good questions on Instagram at Kitch Lambert if you want to participate in the next Q&A. The first question was from at Youssef Salamoud. And Yusef was asking any tips on photographing small towns and what I understood from that question is places that are a little bit boring because you live there and not much is happening. That is a really, really good question and my recommendation is always to take an external point of view when you're in a place you know too well. Meaning, try to think like a tourist. What would a tourist do? First of all, you would go to Google and, and look at things to do in your town. Then you would look at photo inspiration for that town. And you want to see basically how tourists perceive your town. That way, it might get you an insight into what gets people excited. You know, if you see something every day, it's not that exciting. But if you see it for the first time in your life, you might be like, wow, by it. So if you can do that, that's gonna be a great way for you to break out of that boredom, trying to shoot something different with a new perspective on that same old place. Oh yeah. Next question is from at Schellenberg on Instagram. He was asking, what is a good lens to get after 50 millimeter f1.8? My recommendation would be to look at two different lenses in the range 24 to 35 millimeter and one in the range 85 to 105 millimeters. The reason being, if you enjoy shooting wider, you might want to try 24-1.8, 1.4-2.8 or 35-1.4, which is a very classic lens for street photography. But if you enjoy shooting more portrait tighter, then I suggest to you to go towards 85 millimeter or 105 millimeter lenses. And you will see it's going to change the angle, it's going to change the way you approach scenes. And that part is going to be very creative in my opinion, because it's changing the boundaries for your creativity and for your photography. So I hope that will help you decide on your next lens. Next we had Ad Garrett Venter asking, is there a major difference between f1.8 and f1.4? Well, Garrett, I think I answered to you with my previous video, so you can check it out. But no, there is no major difference. The photo itself won't be too different in my personal opinion and based on my experiences. And last question that I'm gonna take today is Miguel Sagredo is asking, what is a fast way to remove dust from your sensor? I can totally relate to that question because that happens a lot. Uh, when you're in a dusty environment, you might have dust on your sensor. So what I use, one of those little blowers like that, flip my camera upside down, boom, blow inside, and then the dust is gone. And if it's really sticking, then I get a sensor cleaning kit that will make it a lot easier. But usually, whoop, that works. And also your camera is supposed to have a cleaning sensor mode. You can try it out and see if it works or not for you. Should we take one more? Come on, one more? Okay, <laughs> okay. last question is simply from Dartmerv22. What lens do you use for your YouTube vlog videos? Any suggestion for a beginner? I use for all those videos you guys are seeing when I'm in the street, etc. a 16-35 f2.8. This is a great lens, but it's not cheap. So a friend of mine uses a 16-35 f4, which is a lot cheaper. It's half the price and it works just as well. You won't have as much um, separation with your background because you're going to be shooting around f4 versus f2.8. But in most cases and for most usage, you will see it's going to be great. And if you need a lot of separation, then you get another lens. Uh, at 2414 or 8518, something like that, that will make it easier in those particular scenarios, especially if you want to shoot cinematics. All right, that's it, guys. 
That's it for today. I hope I've answered some of your questions. I hope you have enjoyed that little Q&A after and those items that I suggested to you, that I shared with you, that I'm using will also be useful for you. And remember guys, if you're new, ring that notification bell. It's gonna make a huge thing. It's gonna be amazing. You will get notified for all the adventures. Obviously you have to be subscribed to do that. It's a privilege. <laughs> I'm joking. So I'll see you in the next episode. Get out there, go shoot, try something different, try something new. Don't get bogged down by accessories, except if they will make you shoot more. All right, let's go, bye.